Cool. All right. We are officially recording. I got my charts back up. Let us talk about Mosey as Bao is channel trading this. There we go. Xander, you should post some more content on channel trading. Uh, I post it every day, Xander. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Xander, I, I don't think there's anything he doesn't post on channel trading, bro. So, guys, if you, um, yeah, in chat, man. Uh, so, Bao, do you want to talk about this trade real quick and just talk about what your thought process was? Uh, you you want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> sure, dude. So, so, what I noticed from the beginning is, let's go through this, guys. Here's what happens every now and then, right? You think a stock. Hey, um, it talks? Yeah. So, this is a good exercise. So, I have the chart up. So now you can explain to the users, to the viewers, how to look at a chart and see mindset. Oh, dude, totally. Because this is literally the first time I'm looking at your chart. So I'm going in this completely cold. And, and here's the thing, guys. Look, just because maybe one of your first trades, because I'm assuming Bao's first trade on this was definitely a loser, right? Like he thought it was down here. It was probably only going to go up to the 450 line. Uh, he averaged up, which got his average up. And then he, he, then he basically covered on the wash. This is mitigating your risk because you don't think it's going to, it's going to crash at 450 and then go back down to 410. You'd be crazy. So, so what saved me on that trade was a max size. Yep. So Mosey is a low float. So if you take a look at the float of Mosey. Yeah. So it was a lower float. I think, what, what was it? It was, um, it was under 3.5. Yep. 3.5. So when you see a low float, man, we talked about this the other week, this last week, you have to, in, in addition to the max daily loss, which I never want to hit, not going to Yep. The max daily loss is still your seatbelt. It will still save your account, man, right? But it still hurts, but it still saves your account. And if it hurts, that means maybe your max daily loss is way too big. So set that lower. So part of the max daily loss, you can also tell your broker to do a max size, or if you have discipline, <laughs> only locate a max size. Or if you have discipline, you go long, only go long a max size. So well, I have a small max size set because I only located a small amount to make sure I don't keep adding and adding and adding. So when it blew up like that, I mean, shit, I was down a couple thousand, but that, that's not much for me and my account. So. Yeah, because because if anything, about we can tell that these were starters at four because you're going for the four fifty line, which I saw. Those are just starters. So the thing that I loved about what you did here, though, is and I think a lot of traders need to kind of you know. Um, basically learn this skill, learn this habit is guys, when you take a first loss, which Bao will admit, this is probably a little bit of a loss. That's no problem, dude. Don't get so down on yourself that you go down and out and then you give I, up. I should, I should have put a hard stop and I would have been okay, but I didn't, I didn't think it was so damn right. fast. And sometimes it's so fast that maybe like, maybe you didn't have time to, which is the only excuse for not having a hard stop guys. Cause you should have one every single trade, which Bao would tell you. But again, if it's so fast, just, just do the best you can seriously. But here's what we notice. So when the top gets set, Bao realizes that there's actually a now a defined set range with this big stuff here, you know, that couldn't make the, couldn't make the, um, the six line, it fails at the 550. And now we have really, really good risk reward under the 550 failing and obviously this low right here. So this is what Bao did all day, man. It's in and out. This is his bread and butter. He keeps seeing, I'm going to scale in slowly and wait and give it probably up to about the 550, not too much more. Um, and then I'm just going to cover on washes. And the thing about this guys is because it keeps going through VWAP or quote unquote reclaiming is what you're going to notice is this is why Bao didn't hold for freaking 410 and 420 and all day fader, which basically don't exist anymore. He's just trying to play the channel as you notice, which is set from this support and this resistance right here, this kind of double resistance, but this peak right here at the 550, you know, combined and uh, what's called a coupling factor with the whole in half dollar amount. So dude, this is why you get, you know, you get a little bit of a stuff right here. You get a massive stuff right here in the one that he just nailed. And it's predefined range that is quote unquote supposed to work in your favor, both long off the support and or short off the resistance and inverse. So you guys kind of clear with that. This is what we do every day. Yep. Exactly. I love, I, bro, I love watching your charts because the thing, the thing that's so funny about is like people think dude, like coming in with fresh eyes that you have like this magic wand and how does he do this? And I'm like, dude, Bao's been doing this for 15 years and I've known how he's been doing it for seven because I've been around for seven years because dude, he lays it out. He spills it out, bro. Just look at every chart and start seeing the commonalities behind every chart, bro. When a stock sets up a range and you know, it's a decent short and you predefine your risk, that's it. 
Stop overcomplicating this, man. Line to line. That's pre pretty much what I do. I find the major resistance lines and I show around that line. Guys, and then cover into the support lines. I, I, I'm a very visual learner, Val, so let me kind of like put this in a way that they'll understand because, dude, I, I, if I hear something, I can't learn it, but if I see it, I can learn it. Guys, when this happens in the morning, this range right here and this support, guess where your shorts and guess where your covers should be? This is not rocket science. Bao is hitting every major pop in what's called scaling in so that he doesn't go all in at 530. So by the time it goes to 550, he's a little nervous. He's going in with bullets. So by the time this craters, he's got his average up a little bit and he's profitable on each what's quote unquote called a channel trade or a short inner resistance that's predefined, which you predefine with your risk and it's already in price action. And then you cover on washes because that's the only move you're looking for. You know, once this range is set up, it will probably test it again and it will probably test again. This is why he's not waiting for down here. Does that make sense? It's not rocket science, man. And how many charts like this does, how many charts of bows look like this? Literally a thousand? 10,000? Like, dude, he posts five a day that look like this on freaking Twitter. <laughs> like, oh man, people just want to make trading so hard, dude. They just want to make trading so hard and they can't see between, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term, between the lines. <laughs> oh man. I'm here to educate you guys on how simple this can be, but you got to get out of your own heads. Uh, you guys should post more content on the channel trading. Really interested. Yep, we did. Okay, let's see. Please go into the mindset of LLIT. Now, you traded that one, right? I think you posted. LLIT. LLIT. Uh, primarily first entries, just trying to follow thought process. Oh, he did. That was channel trading this. Okay, so yeah, this was another one. But the thought process is the same, guys. <laughs> I shortened the resistance. I covered the support. <laughs> it's not much more complicated, man. I'll tell you. Oh, no, this was Mosey. I'm sorry. But I think, wait, Val, th was this? No, this wasn't LLT. No, no. Okay, did you? You did trade it, though. Oh, there you go. There we go. So the thing I like about what Val did here, guys, and I'll kind of do what we do on Weekend Mentoring. I'll kind of break it down. So I'm pretending that Val's on Weekend Mentoring. He submitted his charts. And he's like, hey, Tosh and Harry, can you give a little bit of analysis on was this a good trade? The thing I love on this is he didn't short the front side like he did on Mosey, which he took a little paper cut before making money on it. What he did was he let it extend. And if you guys remember, we were saying in chat, do not fight this, just let it extend. And what you're waiting for before you start in on a short is, is one of two things, or two, if you can get both of them. The first one being a massive stuff, bingo, or number two, a death candle. If you can get both, it's just much more confident on the trade. But if you get one, you now have predefined risk to go in. So what Bao was looking at right here is because this was such a hard stuff and it kind of combines with the 1050, which is a whole and half dollar number level, he's gonna start in after the stuff and he goes in right here. Now, what he does is he starts covering because it is still technically front side, but here's what happens. Once it starts really breaking down, he goes, okay, it looks like 10 is setting up a nice line for resistance that I can channel trade probably up to that level. So when you're starting in at 970 to 980, you're scaling and giving yourself room. I know for a fact that I bet $10,000 that Val would have scaled up to the 10 line, even though 980 was what it kept bouncing off of because 10 is not that far away. Now, if you, if you hold on past 10, you're actually holding on a little too long and you're probably going to get squeezed if this breaks through because it's been under 980 all day um, as it's maybe trying to do right now. But as you can see, again, right here, right here, right here, covers, covers. Co this is channel trading, guys, in a nutshell. This is literally channel trading. So let me just take these off. Do, do, do. Starting to make sense? I mean, Bao, I don't think we've ever given like a super – uh, descriptive, well, the description or thought process on channel training like we are doing today. This is pretty good because you have such good examples, man. These are such perfect examples of channel training, seriously. Um, let's see, where are we at? Um, so stop loss is above 550. It's in the five. Here, I'll go back to Mosey. So that was a question for Mosey. Val, where would you have put your stop loss because you were the one that traded this all day? Where <laughs> would you have put your stop loss? Would you have put it at 550? Uh, uh Oh, let's talk Mosey. On, on Mosey when you were channel trading it, just for this guy's question, iMac. Um, so if you, if you take a look at my chart, I would stop adding over the 540 line. 542 might be the last time I add. Because the last time, the la 
So basically where I stop out or stop adding is the highest price that the last channel trade worked. So the highest price, the last channel trade worked was 942, which was this, the, 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 the arrow before that waterfall. Good. I love that. And, and you guys got to understand, Bao's not putting a stop at 550 exactly because that's a herd stop out. It's probably five, 554. It might even be 557, right, Bao? Because again, if you're going to stop it at 550, I, if you go, do, there's two ways to do stops, guys. Uh, for the beginner, you should use hard stops because you, are, you have not earned the right yet for mental stop. The way I do my stop is I, I stop adding and then it pops back. It breaks that area, and, it, and at, so I stopped adding right at nine forty-two. So I mean at five forty-two, and so once it breaks out, then I start to cover on the way back down because usually the initial pop up, usually there's a, a little rejection down, and that's when I start to cover. So for those that are doing mental stops, which I do not recommend unless you're you're, you're more advanced. Um, that's how I do my stops, but you should put a stop maybe at 545 or 554. Yeah. You know, just, just before the herd or after the herd, right? It, well, not, because, yeah, literally the before herd, after the herd. Because, <laughs> dude, the herd is 550. Like, the stop for the herd is 550. Seriously. And you're going to get blown through if you stop out with the herd. And then it might stuff back down like it does, like Val just said, that he is not stopping out with the herd. And he might get that wash where he goes, look, it broke through. But now I'm going to stop out because it showed it broke through. Does that make sense? Um, let's see. Yeah, so this was kind of the same question. I think how far would you go with Mosey on most trades in the morning before you – oh, okay, this is actually a different question. So I think he's saying on the front side, Val, he goes, how far would you go on Mosey on the first trades in the morning before you cover the loss if there is no pullback? If, or do you scale – You should eight? have – I fucked up. You should not front side trade this. It's a low float. I fucked up because I, I was kind of lazy, forgot about the float. But I had small size, so I was okay. Uh, I started to scale up because it's like the 550 line, you know, and then the 60 line. So I, I had like a bunch of bullets left. That's the only reason. If you take a look at my LLIT trade, that's the way you should trade. Wait for the top to form yep. and then scale the bounce. I, I was just going to say the same thing, guys. Don't, Ashbourne, do not ask the question of how can you do a mess up better. It's you need to wait for that. Like Bao literally just admitted he was just a little bit lazy. Like that he shorted front side probably a little carelessly, um, had had small size, so he wasn't super worried, had many more bullets, but a lot of new traders don't know how to handle this. This is 20 years of experience that can handle this. And he knows that if he takes a couple thousand loss right here, he can make back three or four thousand right here on the channel trade. So a lot of new traders do not understand that level of thinking. And what happens is if they try to, you know, if they get lazy or they copy one of Bao's lazy trades, if if they could, you know, obviously we don't, we don't pump and dump or, or post our trades, you know, like that. So you couldn't follow, but if they did, they wouldn't know how to handle this. Val knows how to handle it. That's the whole point. We make mistakes all the time, dude. We're not going to be perfect. You're going to see a trade where we broke rules every now and then did front side. Why do you think we reiterate them all day? Every single day is we need to hear them for ourselves as well, dude. Everybody fucks up every now and then Michael Jordan misses shots. You know what I mean? Like it happens. But the key is this guys, when you guys fuck up, Better make sure it's small and manageable. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, so the only thing you should be thinking, Asbjorn, is 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 how can I be on the right side of trend all the time? Like like Bao was, dude, on L I X E L I X T or, or L L I T. And the one time that he did short that was front side, he was very ready to make a front side short. Requires front side covers and then wait for the massive confirmation to then start channel trading because a major top is in. Again, guys, this is a whole language that sounds crazy in the beginning, but once you understand it, it's really, really straightforward and simple. Don't fight trend, wait for confirmations and get aggressive once your confirmations are set. So let's see. Oh, by the way, dude, we've given so much already in this webinar, dude, that most paid services elsewhere don't even compare to our free content. I'm just saying, dude, I've never seen such a good webinar for free like this. <laughs> Dude, we basically just gave everybody like one of your biggest strategies and for free. Just saying, know what you pay for, guys. Know what you pay for. Um, let's see. Process second day on LIXT. That was a question. Oh, and remind me about uh, people did want to hear about some crypto stuff, which after we tear apart these charts, we definitely should give our take on crypto for those who didn't hear earlier, I think. 
but uh, well, this is not a this is not a day two. Are you are you asking, John? What's your question for tomorrow? There's no meat. This is this is so dead in the water. It's not even ticking. There's no volume. This is a no play tomorrow. Uh, this is not a day two, man. A day a, something a stock that runs after hours. I don't consider a day two. Bao might have a different opinion on that, but. I honestly, man, kind of consider this a day one because it's after hours. It's not like it ran intraday. What's up? About L-I-X-T. What's your thoughts on this? I always treat these as a day one. I literally do. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up. Um, L-I-X-T. This is like the one outlier of day twos. Like some people think this is a day two. Some argue that it isn't. I'm one of those that see it as a day one. This is... I, I, this is, yeah, they, they like one and a half, you know, it's so, hard, right? so like, the way I trade this is I use the, the lines from the previous day. Or pivots. So if you draw the line from the previous day, it talked up about the same line, 380. Dude, and, and, and literally guys, like if you have this kind of overhead, you're going to be able to use your pivot. Ooh, look, look at the Mosey swipe. Oh, let's see. Let's Holy go. shit. Into oh. a halt. Oh shit! Oh, yeah, shit that's, that's a teleport, guys. You got to be careful. Look oh, what time crap. it is. Look what time it is. We're getting really late in the day. Oh, I lost track of time. Look at the time. I lost track of time over here. Did you get? You, you, yeah, you get you a little bit on a starter. Uh, not much. I have a five thirty eight average. I'm okay. See, guys, I had some. I had some bullets out. I, I lost track of the time. So, I, so talk about the time thing. So Gosh, that's really important. I fucking, if someone told me it was 3 p.m., I would pull some orders out. Yeah, Bao, you handle that, man. So I'll go over the time frame. So guys, let's talk about time frames real quick. So this is one of the things that you're going to notice in trading is that as a trader, you actually have an edge during certain time frames. Number one, I'm going to draw them out literally. This first hour is for shorting. Now, obviously, this is a funny example because Mosey was just absolutely uh, squeezing all morning. This is more of a generalized uh, antiquated notion that it works across the board. But here's the thing, guys. Until, uh, when did I start this webinar? 11 my time, so two. Um, from right now, you know, a previous back an hour, these are the only times in the day that you should at least be aggressive shorting. These are the times where shorts totally have an edge. But here's what happens, and the reason why Bow said he took a small loss on this with his starters, or maybe he's got an average that he's fixing, is the last hour of the day, which some call power hour, some call bullshit hour, you could call it taint hour for all I care. I don't care. It is not the hour that you want to get super aggressive shorting. And if you do, you got to size down like Bow was saying. He's got a couple orders. If he was looking at the clock like really specifically, which sometimes we get a little, uh, you know, um, sidetracked, you want to pull your orders. Like this is not the time to get too aggressive shorting because what happens is, is after this reversal hour, do people get back from lunch? They're ready to do their thing. They're looking what's going to gap up overnight. I, this still average Joe Schmo trader, you know, um, you know, just a normal guy, man. Jose who's working a cubicle or the John who's working a cubicle is like, hey, Mosey looks good. Let's see if we can gap it up for tomorrow and maybe it'll get another 100% move. Whatever, man. I'm just trying to put you in the, in the mind of an average trader who doesn't trade. They just kind of invest in shit companies, right? And the thing with small caps is you don't want to, to, Number one, you don't want to fight trend. And number two, you don't want to, these are not investments, man. These are really bad companies that you don't invest in. So if you know where the edge resides, you can really take advantage of that. Because as you notice, look what Mosey did during zombie hour, the start of zombie hour, it came back to life. And this is why we teach the zombie hour rule of the first hours for shorts. After the first hour, it's really for longs until reversal hour. If you do, if you do short, you got to size down and use the outer lines, which are the channels, which Bao shows you in all of his trading. And then the last hour, you have to really be careful about shorting, truly. Yep. And that's that. So uh, let's see. Yep, that's me and my cubicle channel. <laughs> that's funny, dude. Didn't mean to single you out, bro. <laughs> Oh shit, that's hysterical, man. Um, let's see where are we at with questions, guys. If you have any questions, please post them. Me and Val will get to them. On L L I T with a float of three million and an inside ownership of fifty two percent, does does that there is about what? <laughs> Check out my latest trade on L L I T, Tosh. Let's see, buddy. Nice. Oh, nice, man. I didn't even see that death candle. Holy shit, that's beautiful. 
Damn, that's beautiful, dude. That is the death candle, bro. That is nasty. That's nice. Here's the thing, though, guys. Here's the thing. Because we're in the last hour, don't think, oh, there's a death candle. Let me pile in right now and go full size, and I can fade this bitch into tomorrow. Do not think that way. If you the time zone, the time frames, guys. Keep in mind the time rules. If you guys do not have a handle on your own FOMO, draw the lines. Draw the lines, dude. Draw, like, this is your cutoff point right here. That's your cutoff. You can't be aggressive on the short side, dude. You can't. That's reversal hour right here. I don't care what happens. I don't care if it has an offering. I don't care if it has a death candle. You got to respect time frames, bro. Just like you respect lines. You got to be careful, man. So, you know, oh man, there's death candle. Let me size in. I'm going to fade this overnight. And then boom, guess what? Freaking KBSF happens, you know, or what, what was that one that, that got KBIO. it? Oh, KBIO, KBIO. KBIO comes and you think that they can't buy at the float. They do. There's all this manipulation behind Martin Shkreli and all his nasty pigs. Uh, it's just, dude, this is small caps, man. Anything can happen. So don't go in them with the mindset of there's a hundred percent and I'm going to make bank. You got to go line to line, put your hard stops in and no time-based trading. If you don't aspire to those process and that set of rules, do, do, you know what, dude, just go buy crypto and don't expect to be a trader. Like go gamble, like literally just go fucking gamble because we teach process for a reason. So while other services or clubs have, whatever they call themselves, have laughed at us for years for using lines and process, and now all they do is preach lines and process, there's a reason. We've got hundreds, if not thousands of members over the last three and a half years who have shown results from following time-based trading, cutting off at zombie hour, or at least being aggressive on the short side, respecting reversal hour, respecting the last hour for not shorting and even taking advantage of the long side and having hard stops. And let me tell you, man, when you boil all that down and break it down to a science of lines, time-based trading and trend, dude, trading is so much simpler than you think. And you will be able to supplement that income so much quicker than you think, bro. And you will look back one day and be like, oh my God, I travel the world and I make money on a fucking laptop, dude, with a, with a couple clicks of the button an hour each morning. Or if you're a total degenerate, like Bao, you could trade all day and channel trade and then make what, what most engineers make in a month in one day. I'm just saying, dude, it happens all the time, but we're all degenerates, man. We just, we just know our level of degeneracy. <laughs> I cannot channel trade all day, dude. I do. I give all my money back. Bao's the master at that. Me and Alex, me and Alex are like, dude, look, we're just normal guys in, you know, Camelot. We did not, or what, what, yeah, in Camelot, we, you know, Bow's the one who pulled Excalibur from the stone, dude. Like we know who we are. <laughs> yeah, dude. Any, any more questions, guys? Any more questions on any of this? Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Um, yep. Got that. Bitcoin equals trash. Bro, Bow, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. What do you think, man? Good. Well, all right. So if you guys remember, I, I talked at the beginning of this just as kind of like a random rant, but let's, let's go back over a couple of those points. You know, a lot of people are probably tuning in because they want to hear what we have to say about crypto. Is it a good investment? Should you do it? I will go back to this and say it until I die. Crypto is, when I say it's very new, it's not new in the sense that I think what 2013 was the year it was first, you know, established. It was established by an entity named, you know, quote unquote, Satoshi, an alias of somebody that dude could literally be, you know, I, I, I don't know. It could be Howard Stern who created it for all I fucking know. Nobody knows, right? Except maybe three people on earth with an agenda. I have no idea. Bitcoin is created a long time ago. So nearly a decade ago, but it's now mainstream and everybody knows about it now. That's why I say it's new. It's new to the general public. So what happens when you have something new that's extremely volatile? Nobody really knows if they're going to regulate it entirely. you got the Federal Reserve, who's like the mafia, who's the strongest force in the United States. It's modern day slavery on a monetary scale. You have invisible shackles on, meaning you're you <clears throat> You can't be a guy saying, okay, I made a lot of money and now I'm not going to pay it. You go to jail, dude. So when the Federal Reserve, which has militia and army and all the money in the world, and they're the strongest force out here, and you have to abide by them, when they want to regulate it, or you got people like Janet Yellen saying, hey, you know what, we'll let crypto go through. But if you do make money, we're going to tax you up the ass 80%. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a very volatile sector, dude. It's not something that you mortgage the house and throw all your money into. So what I'm saying about crypto, I'm neither against it. 
but I'm neither super for it. Do I think it's a brilliant um, ideology? Do I think it's a brilliant substructure of this new monetary system where you eliminate four and five, you know, uh, physical entities or transactions down to one or two from person to person? I think it's brilliant. But is it here to stay? I think it is. But should you throw the house on it? No, you should throw the house on your education, something that you can fall back on, something that you can rely on. Bao's been doing channel trading in the stock market for 20 years because it's proven that it works. His process does work. He knows if he loses money, he actually gambled. That's the point. So, so should you throw money into crypto? Only money that you can afford to burn, lose. If you've got $10, sure, throw it in a Dogecoin and you don't care if you never see it again. I've got 8,000 parked in a crypto right now that if I never saw it again, guess what? I wouldn't shed one tear or lose one wink of sleep. I'm not super convinced. I don't even own any Bitcoin or Ethereum because those are the main ones and the miners that are contributing to the, well, to this whole argument that is very much hurting the environment, which is why Elon Musk pulled out it, pulled Tesla out of um, you know, the exchange for Bitcoin as it's not really sustainable for the environment. There's a lot of things that are making it very volatile. There's a lot of things that are making this sector, which is really up in the air of does the coin go to 20K? Does it go to 500K? Does it go to 2 million like some people are saying because it's a finite resource? I don't know, dude, and neither do you and anybody on Instagram. And I've done a lot of research, a lot of research. I don't talk about anything I haven't really fully investigated. Dude, it's a fucking gamble, bro. It is a gamble. China just banned a bunch of shit. It's a total gamble. So only go in what you can afford to lose. That is why today... You have people, like a couple of my buddies, I'm not going to mention names, who bought the dip, dude, at 35, at 30. I know people like that. And guess what? They're rich and can afford to lose way more than you have to your name. That's the point, dude. Only those guys should be going crazy on dips. For those guys who are out there and don't know their ass from their elbows in the crypto market, know that there's 5,000 freaking meme coins, 10,000 altcoins, and freaking two main coins, which is Ethereum and Bitcoin, be careful, be careful, tread in lightly. But I also would say, because I'm not against crypto, that if you don't own even a small fraction, I mean, one or 5% of your portfolio, I do think you're kind of crazy. I think it is a life-changing currency system that's very volatile right now, could totally be adopted in the future, whether it's regulated or not, be something revolutionary, completely change the way we know any kind of monetary structure. And who knows? I don't know. But again, that's the conclusion. Who the fuck knows nobody dude in the federal reserve who will not be stopped mark my words they will not be stopped will figure out a way to win in the crypto sector i fucking guarantee you i guarantee you and that's going to cause extreme volatility Whew, i'm winded <laughs> now you got any thoughts <laughs> nope <laughs> I, was like, I was like dude i'm hitting this pop on mosey <laughs> like, yep so I don't know, dude, do we have any crypto experts? I would love to debate with somebody. Dude. Like I want to bring like a crypto guy on here and like really see their thoughts and someone who's been doing it maybe for years. Like maybe we can get a crypto expert on. Like, is anybody a crypto expert in here? I'd love to have a discussion with you. Seriously. What, what would you want to discuss though? Well, <laughs> that's like, like their viewpoints of why they, why would they, they would be so confident. Crypt, crypt, crypto is the same as stocks, man. If you know the process for MIC, if you know how to draw the lines, it works the same exact way. You should be trading crypto as you trade a stock. The problem is these guys that are driving the Ubers or just normal guys on the street, they're just diamond hands holding this shit forever. And so that's that's where the problem lies. There's nothing wrong with Bitcoin. There's nothing wrong with Dogecoin. It's just you got to be able to know when to sell. Well, and Bao, what do you think about this? Because I actually, uh, I, I, while I totally agree with that, I actually do think, though, that there is something to be said for the guys that are using enough money that's, that's a quote-unquote lottery ticket, right? Not a lot of money where you would have to go from line to line and basically set hard stops. And, you know, you can't be loading up size at 64000 a share, and then it drops to thirty, and you're holding and hoping, and, you're, and your family's life is going to fall apart overnight if it goes to twenty. Well, that, that's a different story. That, that's... If you're gambling, you're going to the casino, you're gambling, you're trading stock or crypto scamming, right? So Correct, correct. But I actually do look for the little guys out there who, you know, maybe make a normal, you know, US salary, which is probably around sixty thousand, and throw two thousand dollars in a crypto and they never want to sell, even if they're down eighteen hundred. I'm actually down with that because they've given enough money that is not gonna alter their life if they lose it all. Those are the only guys right. I do. I'm in hands and hodl too. Dude, if you want to do that, by all means, fucking do it, dude. That's like, absolutely correct. 
But but guys, if you're treating the crypto market like the like um uh, the stock market in this, but like investing in the stock market, so you're like okay, like like I was saying earlier, oh let's talk about um you know uh, what's a really good example about like a dividend pair? Oh Coca Cola, I'm treating crypto like Coca Cola. If it goes down eighty percent, it's okay. It's a great company. It's got a big company moat. They've got a ton of revenue, and they own everything in the world, and they pay dividends. You cannot do that, dude. You have to set hard stops. You got to go line by line because it's not necessarily a good investment. Coca Cola is here to stay. This is why Warren Buffett makes $500 million a year annually on dividends alone. He's got billions. He's literally got hundreds of millions of shares of Coca-Cola. That is a different story. Coca-Cola is not going bankrupt anytime in our future. It's just not, dude. It's not financial advice, but look at the statistics. Then you go to something like crypto and you have guys mortgaging their house and then not cutting for a loss when it dips. They're fucking crazy. They're gamblers. That's nuts. Those guys that are hodling or doing crypto hands are amputated necks. It's true, dude. It's yep. true. <laughs> <laughs> Val loves that amputated. He's like diamond hands. No, dude, amputated hands. So, you know, I, again, I would think even Val would agree. We're not against it, but we're not super for it. We just want you to, if you get involved, predefine your risk, treat it like anything else and be smart, man. And stop with this gambler mentality of crypto is going to go to 500,000. So I only have 60,000 in my name. Let's get one coin. Let's be a part of this movement. No, dude, you don't risk your entire future on one play. It's what's called putting all your eggs in one basket. And guess what happens when that happens? Some people win and some people lose everything. And then guess what? They want to put a pistol in their mouth or they want to, you know, I don't know, man. They get in a really destructive environment, cause other people harm. Like it's very sad to see. So I just want to give a webinar on everybody being multi, multi-dimensional responsible on this subject. I've got a little bit of crypto, only am the amount that I'm willing to lose. If I never saw it again, like I said, I could literally do it. I could give a rat's ass. And then, you know, in five years, whether it fails or succeeds, I can say, guess what, man? I give it a college boy try. I'm part of the movement. Even Alex, who makes $2 million a year, he does not own an absorbent amount. I know how much Alex owns a Bitcoin and Ethereum. He owns a little bit. And guess what? Enough to where if he lost it all, dude, it would be like, all right, let's go grab Wendy's. But I was a part of the movement. That's smart behavior. Very small, just to diversify. I love that. And there, <laughs> there he comes, you sneaky bastard. Alex is like the freaking ninja of these webinars. But the whole point, guys, is getting diversified, sure, but in an amount where it's very justifiable and it's very smart on an analytical sense based on percentages. Does that make sense? So if a professional like ARK Investments look at you or Kathy Woods takes a look at your portfolio, she's like, you know what, I'm good with that. That's all good. <laughs> Although she's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's it's Gabby. Um, so, you know, if anybody has any questions on what we're talking about today, whether it's crypto, where we think crypto is going, um, whether it's stocks, whether it's line to line, you got us, man. You got us. We're here for another probably 20 minutes to answer your questions before we go get some corn dogs and pho and, and rabbit food and <laughs> some inside jokes there. <laughs> And for those who are not familiar with what diversification means, it just means having a bunch of assets under your multi, like multiple portfolios, whether it's crypto, real estate, stocks. If you want to just talk about diversification within the stock market, it's like what I do in big caps. It's I've got a tech portfolio, I've got an ethical portfolio, and I've also got a retirement portfolio, meaning um, I've spread out money across the board of 30 different tickers that I like not going you know, all crazy into one ticker alone. That's what diversification is. It's, it's really, it's options because if one market falls, you know, if the tech market falls, you're up maybe on biotech or maybe you're up on um, insurance. I don't know. I'm just saying that if you put all your eggs in one basket, then you're going to have a really hard time if that's the only sector that's dropping massively. Tech has showed us that in the last couple months when everybody who went balls deep in a Tesla zoom and, you know, frog and Amazon is, I mean, they're hurting real bad. If you, if they went all in at highs, they're not even all in at highs. I mean, these things have been tanking for a little while. So, you know, for the guys that are down on tech, I get it. I'm, I'm a little bit down in my tech portfolio. That's just the way of it. But um, again, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, just like you don't want to put all your freaking life savings and your family's money and, you know, mortgage the house on Bitcoin because that's not diversification. That's very dangerous. Wow. Very nice job there, Val. Dude, that is very fucking nice. 
So guys, remember how you just asked how Bao does, um, how he does his stops? He, he just told you about he's going to wait to see if it stuffs and then wait for a drop back to cover when he knows it's broken through. That is literally what we just talked about on exiting a position. Did not stop out with the herd, waited for to see if the confirmation of a stuff comes. It breaks through the 550, which is where he essentially really wanted to cut. It breaks through, it stuffs, and guess what? It stuffs hard again. He gets his covers to bail out, and he hits one more time to test that 555 level because it did set a top cover, and he's probably done for the day. And I'm going to make sure he's done for the day because Bauer in the last half hour. <laughs> Don't be crazy. It was really nice exits, man. That was a great save. Oh, dude, I'm winded. <laughs> so much to talk about today. I already came in C straight. <laughs> Let's get Alex on here to talk about Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at look, Q's holding up, dude. Hold on. Look at this. Wow, Q's holding up. Let's see if it can continue to hold up, though. I did not expect this day. I really thought we were going to have quite a nasty uh, little tank day. Uh, the webinar will be posted. I cannot guarantee you today, iMac, but it will be posted, buddy. Yes, all of these uh, recorded webinars are posted. Yes, correct. In MIC, so for anyone who's looking into MIC and you want to join uh, and you want to watch literally every single webinar we've ever done, whether it's mine or Aloha's, we record these and we post them in the video library, guys. So if you go back to uh, myinvestingclub.com and you just go cruise over right here, Every, like I said, dude, everything you need is right here at the click of a button and you just go, Hey, all those, um, where was it? I pulled this up earlier, but I'll show it again. You know, Tasha's Q and A webinar. Boom. Oop. I didn't click it, but you guys, you guys get the idea. It's, it, it's all right there. <laughs> Thanks Carl. I appreciate that. But I had to, I had to give you guys a good webinar, man. Make up for being absent last week. <laughs> Guys, any other questions? Does anybody have any questions? And as always, for anybody looking into MIC, you can just text my line at 213-458-5997. I do accept Bitcoin for advice. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't even own Bitcoin. But you can send me some shib coin. Send me some shit coins. Yo, let me get that safe moon, dog. I'm kidding. Any questions, guys? And did you did you guys see freaking Barstool Sports, dude? Dave Portnoy, I think he's backing big or um, I think he's backing Safe Moon now. And like the day after, bro, Bitcoin tanks it drops like fifty percent. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, dude. This is this is such a joke at this point. I can't even stand it. In fact, Dogecoin is going to Coinbase in like three to six weeks, and I wonder what that's gonna do to it, man. Because dude, Co Coinbase is the biggest exchange for cryptocurrency in the US right now. And for those who are not familiar, uh, we talk about IPOs in MIC all the time. This dropped this year, a couple months, I, God, probably not even a couple months ago. Let's see. Um, holy shit, literally, um, right here. Holy shit, what day was this? 4-14-21, the Coinbase drops. I was warning people on day one. I said, dude, do not buy this shit until it hits at minimum starters at 290, maybe 250. Guess what, dude? You could have gotten some nice moves out of the 290 if you nail and bail 250. But again, dude, look at this shit. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Dude, we had, to, we had to give people a good webinar, man. We, we, uh, we, were, we were vacant last week. So again, guys, just know what you're investing in, know what you're getting situated in. If this doesn't show the fact how volatile this sector is, that even the IPO of the biggest exchange for cryptocurrency is now on the stock market and it's still through the floor. So this is just, it has to show you guys how volatile and how dangerous this is. If you just go Russian roulette with your entire bankroll, your account, life savings, you've taken all your mom's credit cards, you've, you've charged your ass off to it, you've, you've, you've bought some Coinbase, some Binance, be careful. Careful, man. Just fucking be careful, dude. Uh, in your guys' opinion, what is the best short strategy you teach for small accounts under PDT? Currently, I am just doing low hanging fruits, but I'm trying to think of which has the most range and only uses one day trade. Alex just said it, dude. First red day. But it doesn't, unfortunately, the, the, there's a caveat with the first red day. It is, thanks, Stock Slayer. Dude, first red day is the number one setup that I love at MIC. It's actually my favorite setup possible. I would venture out to say that is the most after really studying Alex's career for seven years from sidelines and for the last three, very up close and personal as he's one of my best friends. Uh, Alex makes a fucking fortune on the first red day, dude. So I would say that that's probably our favorite strategy. Unfortunately, it does not come that often. So if you are doing under PDT weekly, stay with your low hangers, buddy. 
Stay with your low hangers. Use your pivot points like I just showed you, and uh, you're going to be right as rain. Um, uh, I think – oh, that was the same one. Yeah, cool. Thank you, guys. Um, dude, what a, what a fun webinar today. Bell, what are, you, what are you fucking trading over there, dude? You crazy bastard. <laughs> 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 I knew you sneaked one in. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to – I did it. I... <laughs> nah, you're not. L -L -I -T. <laughs> L -I Let's see what that's doing. Oh shit, what was the L L L I T? Did you catch the 950? Yeah, I posted the tree. There you oh I see it, I see it. There you go. Up to nine. Oh dude, 970 is sick freaking entries, bro. Sick entries. Going based off these guys right here. Uh, resistance, resistance, resistance. Previous, he's shortened right there. Cover washes really quick. Nail and bail. Bell, I implore you not to go back in because you've got 27 minutes. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much done. I'm just covering some stuff out. He did. This, this is what happens, man. When you're, when you're, when you're half of Bell's tab next with Alex, dude, you got to put a leash on this guy, man. It will go crazy. <laughs> Trust me, guys. You, you think it's super easy, man? I'm telling you, dude. Bell's got. Bell's. I'm, I'm convinced to this day that Bell's got like five clones out there trading all these different stocks, and like it's so hard to wrangle all of them up. It's very hard. <laughs> Gotta make sure all of them are staying safe. Wish I had five clones. I'll make five times the money. <laughs> are you kidding me? I said I told that to Alex the other day. I was like, bro, if we just had like three clones of all of us, dude, do you know how much we, we could conquer the world? <laughs> oh man, there's just so many hours in the day and just so many energy levels, man. Especially when you talk this much. <laughs> yep. Guys, closing questions, closing questions. Does anybody have anything you want to discuss? This is your time to shine. Please do not be shy. We're here to educate. We're here to answer all your questions. Uh, if you want to ask within the chat, you got to become a member. You got to become a member. And if you guys want to become a member, I'm throwing some really nice deals right now for annual and specifically accelerator course inclusion. Uh, not for free, but I will talk with you over the phone. Uh, I've got some really cool new things to talk about if you guys want to talk about some stuff. Um, just so much going on, man. That's going to benefit traders who are already a part of MIC and then people are coming in the future. But I promise you right now, if you're already a member, you're going to have a lot more opportunity as we are, um, about to explain a lot of cool stuff soon. So just be patient with us, but you know, some good stuff is always coming. Uh, not only bow trades, five turn stocks do it again. Nice, Nick. Nice. Hey, if you can do it, do it. Dude, you need the screen real estate to trade two accounts though, guys. Don't try to trade two accounts on one laptop. Please be careful. You, you got to have a multi-monitor setup to do that. You're going to be fumbling and bumbling. I've done it before. It's, I used to, I tried, dude, I was on vacation one time, like, like a long time ago, like, like literally like five years ago. And I tried to change, I tried to trade two different accounts on one laptop and bro, I had a really bad day because <laughs> I couldn't remember. I, I, I couldn't filter between the two. Yeah, man. Oh, shit. Is that real? No. Look at this. Oh, it's a project. This probably isn't out yet. Dude, let me, let me know when I can pre-order that, for real. There's nothing like having a little P-Hub up while you trade stocks, dude. I'm telling you, that's enough screen real estate to get it all done. <laughs> Just kidding. Not worth it. Better to get Asus externals. Dude, if you guys want a freaking magician or an engineer at heart on tech, I am not that. Bao is the master at that. I know, dude. That's the thing about shit like this, especially project pieces. You're kind of an angel investor at this stage on something like this, and then I gouge you, bro. Like, this is literally probably a $7,000 laptop. That's ridiculous. Bao, any closing trades? Uh, just try to get out of one losing position. Mosey? <laughs> I'm not going to say until I get out. <laughs> it's not Mosey. <laughs> I was like, I told you not to. <laughs> I, 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 forgot, I forgot the clock and then it spiked up. Oh, I literally just told you to stop. No, no, this was before. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I'm, 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 I'm not that much down. <laughs> I was like trying to wrangle up all these bows. is tough, man. They got clones everywhere trading. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> We're not going to encourage it. <laughs> Nico. He's asking which one of us stuck no. in. <laughs> <laughs> My member, no. Hey, you know, man, when 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 you know what you're doing, you learn the MIC process. You know which ones we 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 got fucked up on. For sure, literally. 
You know, exa- dude, you know, if you've been in MIC for two months, you know exactly which stocks Bauer in or the ones he's like quiet and having trouble <laughs> for the time being. Guys, actually, I'm curious. I actually want to run a poll. Um, give me a thumbs up if you do own crypto. I'm, I'm really curious. Who, what, which one of our members actually own it? Like, I own a little bit of it. Alex owns a little bit of it. Like, we're, like, we're not against it. I'm just, I'm curious who is, has some. Who has, give me a thumbs up. Let me see, let me see. I recently sold all of mine, but good problem. Okay, Stock Slayer was in it, okay. Okay, Trader had some. Gil, you said you would. Some Doge and Ether, okay. Tiny bit, but just, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, yeah, just, again, man, as long as you guys be safe with it, predefine your risk, know that it's very volatile, come in, so some of our guys got it, okay. Bought Safe Moon with my friends a couple weeks back, da, da, da. just got a little bit today, 1K at Doge. Yeah, I like this, I like this. What I'm starting to see is everybody, it seems like is doing it pretty responsibly with small size. Okay. I, I know it's going to be hard to admit, man, because I know there's probably one dude in here that's like, shit, dude, I can't tell Tosh. I'm like, my house is upside down on it. I, I, that, that might be a reality. If it is, tell me in DMs. I'll try to work you through it. But just be responsible, guys. That's the whole point of this webinar is just saying like, wh- whatever, dude, it's like, I'm not kidding, man. It's like, you're super stoked with this new girl or, a, you know, a girl to a guy on a first date. You get super intimate, dude, put, put some protection on, dude. It's like, protect yourself at all costs in every form, man. That's what we're here to do is help you make money, but most importantly, how to save money. Oh, shit. Stock Slayer Stan just said, I've been using the lines in crypto for three years. Boom. Lines. Lines, lines, lines. I know it's funny, man, because the thing, the, the thing about crypto, the biggest problem about crypto right now, in my opinion, on at least on a trader level, is here's what's happening. You have everybody who's so uneducated about charting and price action and so excited and jumped up on emotions and you have 10,000 meme coins and shit coins. <laughs> Everybody's, you know, even celebrities like Jake Paul and Lil Yachty pumping yummy coin and things like that. The, the problem is, is this gets the guy that knows nothing about price action and candles or line chart, anything like that. Dude, they're buying breakouts, man. And then they get dumped on because people that, you know, devs unload their shares on them and trillions of supply. There's just so much going on that it's really sad to see. Uh, you know, again, it's, uh, they're not doing it smart. They're just chasing human emotion. And I get it. Because, dude, when you're 18 and you see your favorite rapper touting, dude, this is going to be the next, like, to the moon, safe moon to the moon. Like, th- oh, man, that's scary. I get it, though. I get it, dude. They just don't know, right? The, the thing with crypto right now, guys, the thing with crypto is it's the same exact thing back in the penny stock pink sheet days of pump and dump. And so who can these, be- these, celebrities, these celebrities are getting in early on these, dude, micro penny stocks with, like, four – triple zeros in front of it, you know? Dude, when, yep. And, and then they pump it to their people and then that, that's how they're trading these cryptos right now. Guys, I'm just going to give you an example not to call him out because I actually really love Jake Paul, dude. I'm a huge fan of this fucking kid. His mindset is unbreakable these days for what he's trying to go after. But here's the thing, dude. I'm going to give you guys an example. This is what Jake Paul's doing. I'll give you, I'll give you a rundown because I follow him for this. A week, a week straight, he was pumping Yummy Coin with Lil Yachty, right? Two very big celebrities with very big following. The next day after he's on a, you, a, a what's called a YouTube, or I'm sorry, an Instagram Live, Jake Paul's literally on a U, uh, Instagram Live with Yummy Coins like devs, the dev team that is Yummy Coin, they're donating. He's like, dude, Yummy Coin is a fucking moon. Fuck the SEC. I'm not a financial advisor, but buy this shit up. He's pumping this, and then the next day, bro, he's he's on MILF. So when you see a tweet like this, this is a cryptocurrency tweet. He's going, thinking about becoming a MILF. It's very ambiguous. It's very vague. But if you're trained in the sector and done your research, you know. So go to MILF token. What is it? The next day, he's on a new one. It's unheard of. What they're doing is something new within the space. They're giving, they're dropping cybernetic. So basically, um, for shareholders of this token, they're actually giving NFTs to, and all cards on the table, I know I own none of this fucking bullshit. Um, but what's, I'm trying to educate you guys a little bit. This is the cause of all this FOMO in the world right now. So what is happening is I guarantee you, I would stake $10,000 on this. The reason why Jake Paul went immediately into MILF coin the next day, and, and if you look at some of the comments, they were like, dude, you were just pumping yummy coin. Why the fuck are you on this? Because the dev teams got a hold of him and said, listen, 
if you pump this, we're going to give you a trillion coins. And when you guys think that that's a lot, it's not. These things trade a you point. Know, you know what, man? If he doesn't disclose that, he's going to prison. Well, that's the scariest thing, man. So, so what, the whole thing I'm trying to get at, guys, is there's so much unregulated, you know, facets going on right now in this crypto. It's regulated, bro. It's well, just well, it's, 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 sure. uh, regu- if if they got compensated, they did not report that they're dead. That part yeah, is regulated. Man. Yeah, eventual. You know, the eventuality is people who keep it under the low and then dump. So who knows, man? He might be totally like doing this on his own without their help. But do the odds of that happening are probably not nothing. It's meaning that he's getting hooked up, he's pumping it, he's getting a bunch of followings with it, and then people, the unsuspecting 18-year-old to 22-year-old goes, oh my God, dude, now he's on milk coin. We gotta buy this shit. They're not looking at the chart. Oh, did did the- those stocks go up? Oh, dude, they go up immediately, Val. When he's, dude, I, I, I literally watch these all week because I'm trying to educate people on this. Bro, when he started pumping Yummy Coin, this shit went through the roof, tanked. When he pumped it again, it went through the roof, and now um, Milf Coin, let's go. Hold up. Milf Coin. Dude, these are bumping up. The developers are creating billions of coins for themselves. I mean, that Brilliant. is fucking Brilliant. This is basically just printing money. And you know what, man? The SEC is going to be looking at that shit. Um, I'm trying to find the actual one. This is not, no, that's not it. There's so many versions. You got to see the, like, what the fuck? There's so many damn, no, that's not it. Um, Well, just to give you guys, just to, Milf coin. That's fucking funny, bro. All I'm saying, yeah, Milf coin. Um, they're trying to do something new. Like I said, where shareholders will literally get airdropped NFTs of Milf. So they're trying to do this like real world utility type shit. And the, the problem is guys, is all I'm saying is, is stop chasing. This whole webinar is just stop chasing and only risk what you can afford to lose. Literally, that's what this whole webinar is about. Dude, you're investing in shit called MILF, and then there's one called tits, and then there's another one called ass. I mean, ass coin. I mean, I don't know, man. If you if you have to ask advice on how to trade those stocks, I mean, take a look at the names themselves. Dude, here's here's how you know when you're in trouble in the 21st century is when someone comes up to you and says, oh, dude, you're an investor. And you go, dude, oh, my God, you want to see my portfolio? It's full of ass tits and MILF. I'm going to be rich. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's fucking funny, though. (laughs) It's fucking hysterical, dude. I'm like going to create a token tomorrow called Ballsack. Like, dude, it's just, and it'll probably sell. Like, but I'd have to disclose I've got a bunch of shares and I'm unloading on the suspecting public. Like, this is the shit, dude. You can go create a shit coin in two hours with $700. Anybody in here. All you have to do is educate yourself on how to do it. Don't do it, you fucking scumbags. I'm telling you not to do it <laughs> because then you're going to be a scammer. But what I mean is, is this is how easy it is to kind of quote unquote dupe the public. Okay. That, that part is unregulated as of now, but I, I cannot. See, they're not. I mean, dude, they gotta fucking regulate that shit. Well, Every, that's- everybody's gonna be crazy. Tits, ass, penis, whatever the fuck. Well, you want that, to call, that, right? That's why, dude. If you look, that's why when I just tried to find milk coin, bro, three different ones came up. I think people are competing now with fucking Jake is now they're yeah, stripper coin mill finance. Like that's not even the same one. So my point is dude, when, when bow can go like this, okay, webinar is over. I'm going to go create a token called faux token in two hours. They'll charge me $700. I'll hire someone on Fiverr to create it. And now I'm going to dump it to the public dude, 18, 14 year olds from their mom's basement are doing this and they're succeeding because it's got moon in the title. They create a social media presence that says moon, 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 stripper, stripper stripper milf coin milf coin we're gonna get rich and then obviously it's a secret agenda it, it, just be careful guys very scary shit very scary that's, that's, i mean dude I, I, man the sec finra they're slow as fuck seriously if they hired one of us <laughs> they paid me fucking billion dollars i'll probably make them a trillion dollars <laughs> Bow, how, gonna, they not, okay, how can they not see this shit creating random tokens do you have to be fucking registered? You have to be financial, like nope. Nope. I mean, that's that's the that's the thing. How can you fucking create a stock if that's, you're not fucking registered or licensed, that's right? That's what I'm saying. So when Jake Paul and Lil Yachty and all these celebrities, like freaking even Dave Portnoy, who's now pumping Safe Moon, there's no regulation to get him in trouble yet. Quote unquote. Dot dot dot. Put a pin in yet. Like correct. That's just fucking crazy, man. Like, dude, Dave Portnoy, Safe Moon. Like, dude, this is his whole thing now. Oops. I typed it in wrong. Uh, why is crypto saving trending and why is Dave Portnoy using it to diversify his Bitcoin? 
<laughs> so, so the whole that, that, okay. So that so that Dave Portnoy shit. This is a good learning experience, guys. Dave Portnoy is buying the fucking hype. It's too fucking late. So that's why when he bought that shit, it dropped, right? Yep, correct. So, so, so you're, I mean, if you take a look at stock, these, they're up a hundred thousand percent, and you're fucking buying it. You gotta be the dumbest fucker, right? Here, here's the point. Here's the point. Again. If you got hype on these and you want to get in because you think SHIB is the next Dogecoin, like a lot of people are saying, who the fuck knows, dude? Dogecoin was supposed to be a joke in the beginning. Maybe they do. Guess what? Don't risk any money that you're not afford to laugh at as you lose. That's the whole thing, dude. That's the whole thing. If you can't afford to put $2,000 in a Shiba coin, don't. If you want to put 10 bucks Shiba in- coin. See, that's the thing, man. They create a fucking dog because Dogecoin went up. I mean, they're going to have a poodle coin. I mean, dude. Bro, there's, about, there's already this, this is, hold on, hold on, there's a dog mean, Bro, there's already a million of them. Hold on. Like, literally, there's like, I, I could probably get you a lit. Yep. Crypto doggies IDO. How many? Let's see. If, let's see. Crypto how many doggies. Are. Bro, there's so, there's like literally 20 already, bro. There's Akita. There's Shabu Inu. There's Husky. They did a freaking Keanu Reeves um on that movie where they kill his dog. Like, they did like the Keanu Reeves dog. They did. <laughs> Shiba Inu, it's fucking crazy, bro. It's crazy because any 14-year-old can do this in their mom's basement and then pump to the mass public, pray to God Jake Paul gets wind of it, and then boom, you're rich. I almost feel like... Huh, so, thing, man. so Jake Paul is coming this fucking bullshit called MILF, which is basically worthless, right? Yeah, that's and Now you've got, a, you've got more scammers creating MILF copycats. It's like the URL. Back in the day, you remember? You, people buy URLs and you type O and you go to a different website. Oh, so yeah. they're hoping that, so they're hoping that you buy the wrong milk. <laughs> <laughs> they're hoping you buy the wrong milk. Here's the, here's the thing though. Are all of these going to be 100% a scam? No, they're not. Some of them are giving back to charity like a million dollars in a month. But again, guys, how do you differentiate? Fuck the charity. The charity is a scam, man. They're making a <laughs> billion dollars and give that. That's fuck bullshit. It's like that farmer guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh man, does the carpet match the drapes on that scam artist or what, dude? Oh, Giving back, God. give back Thursday. I'm fucking thankful Thursday. Thank, Thank you for making me a billion dollars. I'm gonna give back a million dollars. Thank you for letting me bend you over, sheep. <laughs> MIC coin. Um, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. We need not, MIC coin. Not every single person in the world is a scammer, but the majority of them are. So you've got to be very, very on your toes. You got to know what you're investing. And if you do get a little of the hype and the FOMO, again, how much can you lose? And you'd laugh at it as you lose. It's just a joke. You're not expecting anything other than going to your local supermarket or wherever you get lottery tickets and buying a lotto ticket and say, look, your chances are one in 400 million, but fuck it. Fuck it. You can afford to lose a couple bucks. That's the point. All these people are throwing in their life savings and then they wonder why. Hold on, what's the fuck? <laughs> Val, you want to see the funniest one so far? Go for it. Come Rocket coin. They're wondering why they lost their all their money on Come Rocket. <laughs> Come Rocket. Dude, this is a Dude, real coin. Fucking, this is a real say. coin. It trades at 0. 0.069. <laughs> there's the chart for Come Rocket. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Come Rocket. Yep. I, I'm telling you. Dude, that, but that's the thing. They, these guys can print themselves a billion trillion coins, right? This is this is it, dude. This is literally a coin. So it's, it's just it's just fucking Jesus, man. I I just, I just don't fucking get it, man. Now I think you should invest in this when the when the when the when the webinar's over. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. I'm totally kidding. You guys got to be careful. But is every single one a scam? Probably not. Not at all. But most of them, yes. Be careful. Yes, most of them. Uh, where was I going with that? I wanted to say one last thing, though. I totally forgot. Um, shit, I totally forgot. I was gonna say something. I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? Is there probably a coin named Shitcoin? Oh, dude, yeah, there is. <laughs> dude, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm so obsessed with learning everything. If there's a new trend, bro, I will literally read endless articles on it. Everything, bro. Everything. The, 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 the funny thing, though, now is basically, dude, if this crypto shit, you can create all your coins. That's how fucking these scam companies get, are doing the, the IPO. So instead of IPOing on the NASDAQ, that's what they're doing right now with these fucking coins. So you guys got to be careful. Well, you know, you know what's working, though, Val? You know what's working, which I think will be if cryptocurrency is here to stay. The things that are probably going to work, dude, 
are the things like 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 real altcoins, not like obviously something called stink rocket coin. I'm talking like something like Tether or you know XLM. Like I have no idea because I don't even own these. But these are like trading at like a dollar to five dollars, and this is something where they actually have super duper real world utility, you know, processing and cloud storage. And these are actual cryptocurrencies that could be here to say these are not just 100% joke. Like these are things that actually do shit. This is only one that I found out recently. I don't own any, just all cards on the table, but I'm just saying like, I don't know. These could be the ones that are here to stay because maybe they're not mined. Maybe they're not, you know, killing the environment. Maybe they're not, you know, the trailblazers like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I don't know. Again, all of this is so speculative that if you're going to put your money on something, maybe it is better to not put it in cum rocket. And maybe if you have to get in crypto, I don't know, something like Tether or something like Uni, you know, Uni Exchange. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude. If you if you're if you lost your life savings on Come Rock, I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> and and for those that want to shorten the shit, good luck. You're shorting a shit that's worth shitless, but if it goes up huge, you're gonna commit suicide. Yeah, that's that, that's why honestly, bro. At the end of the day, I would never ever short anything cryptocurrency i just would i don't have the stomach for it because when you're fighting stupidity which the world trend seems to be over cryptocurrency and the fomo that it is uh be careful shorting that shit man as stupid as it sounds as stupid as come rocket sounds um it's something that i wouldn't touch on the short side man just go with line of line and stocks that work process process but at the end of the day bro process 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 do not short crypto guys yeah, it's just, it's too, dude, I feel like shorting crypto is way more dangerous than even buying it, for God's sakes. Who the hell knows, dude? All you got to do is have a Warren Buffett type come out and say, eh, I was wrong. I like crypto. Warren, you know, Berkshire Hathaway loaded up into your smoke. You're going to get Bitcoin up to 200,000 a coin. Like you're smoke, bro. I, I would never want to short that shit because you never know who's going to change their mind. You never know if someone's going to come out of the woodwork after saying they hated it. Oh. And they're like, dude, this is the most. Come out of the woodwork. Come rock it out of the woodwork. Dude, could you imagine Warren Buffett's like, bro, I loaded up on come rock it. Let's get some dividends from that. You never know. You know, well, probably not that one, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, dude, nobody thought that, that, that Elon Musk from this meme or this little token right here, this, uh, whatever this is, this GIF, uh, no one thought they were going to see Elon Musk smoke weed on basically national television, which was Joe Rogan's podcast, which is one of the most viewed things in history these days. Um, and then Tesla stocked absolutely got smoked back then at the time being and shareholders were like you motherfucker how could you do this this is so irresponsible as a ceo and he's just like look dude i didn't think it was that big of a deal like you never know bro that's the scary part of investing or betting big on something that's either speculative or you're just too much into one basket investment makes sense like for the guys that had their life savings and everything in a tesla and when that happened bro they were fucking pissed they were pissed so, you know, I still love Elon Musk, dude. Boy, did he, as Alex tweeted earlier, boy, did he, was he the most celebrated human being in human being history? And then a week later, the most hated across the Bitcoin community. And then until today where he tweeted for what it's worth, Tesla hasn't sold any, you know, Bitcoin and we're still diamond hands, bro. Did that have a bounce from 30,000 up to the forties? I'm telling you, man, this manipulation in this sector is nuts. Mm -hmm. Shit, I tired myself out just talking about it for two hours. <laughs> All right, guys, I think, what do you think? Wrap it up, Bell? Good. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Hopefully you, hopefully not come rocketing. Uh, I hope you learned something today on this, on this webinar, man, whether it was just speculative nature based on crypto. We definitely taught you a couple strategies for missing a week uh, based off Bell's channel trading today. I mean, dude, literally this is probably one of the best webinars we've ever done. If you guys sat through the end, I'm going to give you a special deal on annual and accelerator. You don't want to miss this opportunity we got so much stuff going on. Val, awesome, man. That's awesome, dude. Little $8,000 day right there. Just channel trading, bro. Even after the first loss on Mosey front side, bro, that's really nice. That would have been 10 or 11,000 had he not done the front side. So that's the importance of following trend, not fighting it, sticking to your process. And as always, man, if you got any questions, bro, literally anything about MIC, what brokers we use, how to get started, um, what the prices are, just, just text my line, man, 
5997. Next week, we will totally go into another discussion, maybe a little crypto as we're kind of, you know, introducing us a little bit in our talks just because it's so prevalent these days and so interesting. We're trying to keep people safe. And as always, man, we'll, we'll break apart Bow Live Trading and what we do in MIC, which is way more profitable, way more expected, and way more process oriented. Guys, have a good rest of your nights. We'll see you next week. See you, Bow. Bye, guys. Thank you.